Hello, Fleetubers. It is Godzilla294 here, coming at you with another figure review. And this time it is on the Bandai-powered Pestar figure. Pestar is a very interesting kaiju. Because, I mean, once you see the creature, you can obviously tell that it's two guys in a suit. But it just really intrigues me on how the, the final product of the suit comes out. Because, I mean, you can tell, but at the same time, it's really interesting. Because it's just like, you're so amazed by how the suit looks that you're like you're just like, you're just in awe. Because Pestar is such a creepy unique kaiju and the powered version bumps it up the, the next level because the, the original pestar appeared in the original ultraman series and pretty much was a green starfish kind of with a bat kind of head and the powered version makes it look more of a more like a sea star right as you say more of a starfish and his face looks more aquatic and more insect like which i really like and you still have the same elements that you did in the original show with the ears it's just different colors and different types of details on, on the monster fun fact pestar names is a combination of petroleum and starfish it's honestly that's really pretty clever if you think about it pestar appears in episode 10 of ultraman power series and pestar is obviously an aquatic creature but the interesting fact is that he feeds on oil tankers and oil rings and stuff like that. So that's pretty much one of the reasons why he causes so much havoc. Because he's trying to eat oil because that's what he consumes. And in his process, he makes a lot of explosions and kills a lot of people. But, I mean, what you can do, he's a monster. So, <laughs> And the cool thing about this pet star is that they can't... Ultraman can't use his Bessium Ray because if he does, he'll cause a huge, huge explosion. So they try to freeze him at first, which works for like a couple of minutes. But then Pestar breaks free due to all the oil fires around him. So what Ultraman Power decides to do is throw him in the air and use his Bessium Ray to like, pretty much blow him up, which works. Now as for the detail, the detail on this figure is very phenomenal. This figure came out in 1994, and you can just tell by the plastic and look of it that it's old like even when you touch it you can hear how like hollow and hard it is which is really nice so that way you know it's vintage i thought about customizing it but then eh, i want to keep it vintage but this figure has like weird it's the way this figure is put together is really weird there's on the back pretty much half of the stars on both sides is pretty much one big piece and then his head his head is like pretty much just attached to his body like it doesn't even swivel or anything it's pretty much just glued on there but the figure, you can tell, like in this picture right here, you can see all the glue is still there and stuff like that. There's some light dry brushing on the back to pop it out, but... The stars in the front, like all the suction cups and stuff like that, look really nice. And if you go on the squiggly lines, that kind of look like seaweed, in the show, those were painted black. I kind of want to do that, but then again, like I said, I want to keep it the vintage look alive. And I really like how you can tell on each corner of the starfish that he has fingers, which he does have in the original suit as well his face looks really really creepy like his eyes one's up higher than the other which i don't know if it's just like a mold problem or i don't know but his face tentacles thingies they're in the show they're pretty much like crab arms and they look really creepy but i mean on the figure you can't get that same slender thin look so that's why they're kind of thick on here and one thing that kind of like i was like kind of tripped out about was like the feet pretty much are in the back of the monster instead of in the front like Maybe two of the feet could have been in the front and two of them in the back so he could have an equal support system of his weight, but eh, what you gonna do about it? I kind of want to do some light touch-ups on his face, you know, to cover up the plastic, the vinyl, but eh, what you gonna do? So now here for size comparison, here he is next to the Bandai-powered Red King, and it's very well in scale, as well as the powered Gamora. And this line is supposed to be the 8-inch line, which some of them are, but some of them are 6 inches, but what you're gonna do, Bandai always has... To, in my opinion, the Bandai-powered line so far has, like, a lot of size accuracy within the toy line and here he is next to a custom NECA Godzilla and Leatherback from Pacific Rim. Now here you have it with the Bandai Creations Godzilla 2014 so you can kind of get to see of how big he is but he's Pissar is really wide and here he is next to an Ultra Act Ultraman Mobius. And here you have Little Godzilla with Pestar. I mean they're both adorable. <laughs> And just for fun, here he is with the newly released Movie Monster series by Olante. I was so grateful to find this figure for a good deal. I got him $21 shipped on eBay. And this, first of all, I got this figure because it pops out to me. The design is really cool. The colors are very vibrant. And the original figure for the original Pestar in the 19, 1966 Ultraman series, the figure is pretty much the size of an Ultra 500 series figure. Just because I don't know if Bandai didn't have it in their budget or they just didn't want 
to make people spend more money on a figure, but I prefer perfect s scaling than a small figure. That's why I only stick to the Bandai DX line now, because I don't like the Ultra 500 series. So, since Pestar is an aquatic monster, I decided to use some like a blue fi blue wash filter, and I kind of I kind of had fun with the photography for this video because he, he kind of, in my opinion, looks like he's underwater. Kind of want to add some bubbles, but then I was like, mm, that's too much Photoshop work, <laughs> and I don't have the time for that right now. Some of you guys are not into Ultraman, and I understand why, because it's not Godzilla, but Godzilla pretty much started the Ultraman genre, because the special effects director created Ultraman. Anyways, so. You guys just watch Ultraman Power, it's the Ultraman series, and it's in all English because it's an American produced Ultraman series, which sadly did not air in any American television networks, it only aired in Japan in around the 94. And the monster action, um, it's not the greatest, like throughout the 13 episodes that the show had, the monster action progresses, but eh, what you can do. The suits, designs, and special effects in my opinion are very, very, very well done for when the show was made. It was made in 1992, but it aired in 94 in, in Japan. But honestly, give it a watch. It's on YouTube and HD, and it's really, really good, in my opinion. The acting is questionable, but I mean, it's a very good it's a really good time for some monster action. Do I recommend you get this figure? Yes, this figure is really huge. It's really nice, but find it for a decent price, because some of them, it's not worth $40, $50. I'd say probably like $30. Bucks. Yeah.